Greetings and salutations, all you absolutely stunning individuals. Welcome back to another Epi of League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you guys, and it is finally time. It has arrived. Rogue has risen from the ashes. They do still exist. They will actually put together a team for 2025. And with that rumored roster, we now have it. All 10 teams in the LEC, which means it is time for our first power rankings for 2025. Normally call these the way too, way too early power rankings and yep. in, in, in the things. But you know what? With the changes coming to next year, the new, uh, you know, the split formats that will be going across globally, the new international event mm -hmm. early in the year, this doesn't feel all that early anymore to get a good look and get your a baseline set for some of the changes that have gone through between 2024 to the 2025 season. And, you know, maybe we should be throwing Las Ratones on this list if they're going to be playing in the Red Bull event in a couple of weeks, but not quite cracking the top end yet. But we start with, there's a lot of changes on most of the rosters heading into the LEC, and we begin with that number 10 team, and that is Team Heretic Sans Yankos heading into the year. Sheo coming in to replace him, and with... Three rookies coming into this squad. There's a lot of pressure on both Sheo and Flacken to lead this team. Yes, and usually in those type of situations where there is a, a healthy or a large percentage of that roster made up with that young, fresh, rookie, talent, inexperienced, green, whatever label you want to throw on it, for that lack of exposure at this top level, experience at this level, that's what this Heretics team is bringing out. And usually you're looking for the veterans. Who is implanted here as the anchor for this team to help out these young players throughout all the things on and off the rift that will be going through the course of being a professional. You don't exactly have that full confidence in guys like Sheo and Flackett to be the ones leading that charge, holding up uh, the gameplay on the rift for this Heretics team to really be pushing any further than the 10th spot. Flack of the only guy returning on that squad. You look at the number nine team in SK Gaming. You've got both Isma and Rahel coming back. Rahel's going to get a new support in Loopy, who played in the LLA last. Was a former teammate of Rahel's on D-plus Challenger. Gen X, a face we're familiar with in the LEC. And same with Reeker. But both of them, they've dominated the ERLs at time, but it hasn't translated to the LEC. Yes, and so that's uh, one of the things that you're kind of uh, cautious about with them when you go back to reference and look back at the performances in the ERL because it has been one of those ones where you've had enough exposure at both tiers where you can say, yes, this is how it goes here, and you're clearly able to cut above this one, but are you able to push into this next tier, this next level of gameplay? And that, I think, is still unproven for both of them. Although, when you do look at Gen X last time, Around with SK, he certainly wasn't the one that you were looking at and talking about being the issue of what was going on with this roster. I think Rahel needs to take that next step forward as an ADC to, in order to anywhere see this team in that conversation for a playoff spot. And there was such a steep drop-off for SK. I feel like we forget that we were talking about Rahel and Luan as a top three bot lane in the league at one point when SK was looking good. Yeah, and Isma as well is someone that had uh, his moments and certainly was someone that was developing alongside Niski in that mid lane. And then the synergy that they had was one of the things that we talked about throughout the year when they were popping off. So that's going to be something that I am keeping track of moving into this next year, whether away from Niski, he can continue his development or if it's going to be, as, again, about developing that synergy between him uh, and Reeker in the mid lane. No shortage of rookies heading into this year in the LEC. Next squad up, you got Vitality in that eight spot, and you have both Nak Nako coming in, and then of course Shayek in the mid lane. And this is the reason you got Vitality a bit higher is obviously a sturdy but sometimes psychotic presence of Karzi and Hellasang in that bot lane. But the other three young guys are getting promoted from within. These are from the Vitality B roster that made top four at the summer EMEA Masters event, but they've already got that built in synergy and they're working within the same organization to help that transition to the LEC. And I feel like this is just one of those ones where you're cautious still about the rookies and what they're going to be capable of, how they adapt at that next tier uh, before wanting to throw it into this power ranking playoff type of tier area for the LEC is where we're holding pattern for Vitality as you laid out the veterans that are returning, Karzi, Hillisang. 
quite an unlikely duo that I feel like has been able to stick together or find this type of chemistry uh, in the bottom lane. They're, bot times, they're top three or bottom three bot laners in the LEC. That's exactly where I was gonna go. I was gonna say at times they have been amongst the very best we have ever seen in this region. And at also times we have seen some of the biggest whoopsies and oopsies that you ever have seen in the LEC from this duo. So I'm willing to to wait on Vitality there. This is the area where I think outside of talking about Heretics and SK and 10 and 9, once you get to 8, it starts to have a little bit more options, a little bit more chances that you're talking about a team that's going to be able to find success, going to be able to get the positives out there on the board. Yeah, because you start to see the ceiling raise a bit in this eight spot. You've seen uh, both of these solo laners pop off. And, you know, we saw a lot of vain top out of Vitality B in their runs and EMA Masters and confidence out of Shyak in that mid lane. So ceiling again, a little higher for Team Vitality. In no world did I think we'd be having Rogue in a seven spot, even that high when we had no inkling of what this roster was going to look like besides Larson. They absolutely just picked up almost leftovers from some of these rosters to bring in Adam, Patrick, Execute, who was Zhang Hoon when he was uh, having a good time on Astralis back in the day, one of the most exciting Pike players. And Maul Rang and Larson, of course, we know already had historic levels of success together before. So shout out to Rogue for somehow putting together a good roster. I, I didn't see this coming. I did not see this coming. Rogue coming through with this roster. And you, you know what? Yes, we've got them, uh, you know, as, as low right now as seven. And we're, we're feeling about them heading into this year. You can make a lot of conversations about the potential for this roster if they do hit it out. If they crash and burn, I feel pretty safe with this number seven spot in, in the list and where they're going to find themselves for the year. But if all things go right, the potential for this team, they can be that dark horse in the LEC. This one that is upsetting and upturning all of the expectations of everybody ahead of them. This roster has got some firepower. Adam coming through is going to change up and shake up all the expectations, all the bad labels that we would usually throw onto Rogue for being boring, being you know non-proactive in how they play. Adam and Execute, as he said, Jonathan coming in, those guys are not going to be passive. They are not going to be waiting for something to happen. They will make sure that they hit that accelerator. All right, another one of those ones that is that accelerator, someone who's not going to be passive and will set the pace. Just need Larson to follow up on it, return more so to that form where he's talked about as one of the greatest mids in the European region alongside Caps. That is the ticket for talking about this team at a much higher place. It does still want to put that caveat and that asterisk there. To, there is a chance for the crash out. The crash out is here at number seven. One of the only teams with no rookies coming in, right? These guys are all proven to various degrees in different regions, but... Absolutely, uh, with Patrick and Larson more conservative carries, having those other three guys, definitely the playmakers of the squad where we're not going to have no 2-0 score lines at 20 minutes with this iteration of Rogue. Talking conservative places, Carmine Corp at number six. I think, obviously, Kalis, the most hyped up rookie coming into this year. Uh, Kana wasn't quite at the level we were expecting last year. Yike coming in to be the leader of this squad. Six is a conservative spot. I think this team could hot, climb as high as top three. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping. I am actually really hoping that we do get to see that. I think that the vibes, the, the energy level of the LEC would be at an all-time high if you have this Carmine Corp competing into that tier of the LEC. Stepping into this year, of course, Kaliste is the big name, is the big uh, acquisition, big promotion in the bottom lane that we are looking at and his hype, his potential on what he can be as an individual player. But we all know, again, even with all that hype, even with all that excitement about an individual guy, it still is that team game. There still needs to be other things, especially in a position like ADC, that are going right to enable you to be able to showcase your skill, to put forth what you are made of out there on the rift. And that's where it comes down to these other members of this Carmine Corp team as you laid out Kana in the top side. I think a lot of us felt like this was going to be a spot where maybe he can explode, can regain some of that confidence and form that he had back in the T1 era of his early start to beginnings of his career. 
didn't quite deliver to that type of level for Carmine Corp. But I think, you know, again, familiarizing himself within the region, with his play, with his teammates and the, and the you know communication between them. I hope that that is something that we continue to see improve because he should be one of the more dominant options in that top side in this region and could be extra value for this Carmine Corp team. Callisto, you might be saying, is Targamus really the support you want to pair with this hype rookie coming in? But they've played together, and apparently that's who Kalist was asking for. So maybe the synergy is going to uh, surprise even us and Carmine Corp climbs up. But they could definitely leapfrog a squad like Giant X in that five spot. I think a lot of this is... Noah and Jun, the known commodity, as one of the best bot lanes in the LEC. Obviously a huge upgrade for them. And the continued growth that we're expecting out of Jackies to be a top three mid laner in the league. Yes, that is what we need to see if this Giant X team is going to find themselves in this type of position. Because you laid it out. The upgrades have arrived. The reinforcements have come through for this team, for Jackies. You have got a bottom lane that can compete, can provide those advantages, those different positions, different game states, where you now are no longer way behind or in a situation where it is almost improbable, impossible to find the right combination of a team fight and, and this and this afterwards to bring yourself into that position where then it's about what your decision is, what your execution is on how to win a game. Now you're in that spot. You throw in the bottom lane of uh, Fnatic last year coming on over here to Giant X. Excited. Can't wait to see this one. And I think you even look at the top side of this map, you're getting upgrades as well. Closer, I think most people thought was going to be washed when he came over to Carmine Corp, but actually ended up having his best split in multiple years. And then the rookie coming in lot in the top side, Team Go, where he was, had a surprise top four run at the EMEA Masters. And he, as a rookie, the potential is a big upgrade over what you were getting out of the Antonio last year. I think that potential is, is is a large part of, again, why this Giant X roster seems to be interesting for this time around, why there seems to be that hype and excitement, because it's not just about Jackie's. It's not just about, oh, if he can take this next step in his career, it's because there's other things involved with that roster, that bottom lane, the hype and potential in that top side. Closer is that other angle. Again, I like that you bring him up. I think that he was someone, again, had a lot of doubts, a lot of questions about whether which closer you were going to get from the 100 Thieves era because we saw multiple iterations of them and some of them were fantastic. Some of them were some of the best in the world and some of them were not, very simply put. So that was a big one and I think that heading into this year, we've seen a lot more of the good closer than the bad closer during his stay. Top four angle and this is where you get the real contender status coming in team bds a squad very familiar with fourth place finishes throughout the majority of 2024 oh, no. but they're getting an a plus in terms of offseason moves out of me irrelevant was the most sought after top laner in free agency he's going to be an upgrade over adam uh paris was one of the most hyped up erl guys right alongside skewmond coming uh, from that bds academy getting promoted over labrov ice is coming back nuke is coming back and even 113 when he was on Astralis, there was absolutely potential. He was so young and unproven. He's proved himself again in the ERLs. BDS fans should be excited about this roster. And this is one of those ones where I want to call back to kind of talking uh, about SK, you know, Gen X and Reeker, talking about how they've kind of bounced between the ERL and the LEC. And at both times, you know, proving, yes, you can climb yourself out of that ERL, but you're not quite enough to make that permanent stay in the LEC. That's the question we're asking here when you're talking about this BDS team, when you're talking about what is going to be capable for them heading into this next year with 113. Because, yes, I think he is another one of those guys that has clearly proven he can climb out. He is capable to edge himself out of this uh, ERL situation. Is it enough to deserve a spot in the LEC? That's going to be the question this time around because the, and the demands are going to be there for BDS and what they're looking for from the jungler to provide for this team, as you said, irrelevant, one of the most sought after guys in that top side. And if you're gonna replace Adam and what he brought to the team, irrelevance uh, almost as good as you could get within the LEC, within the European region. Definitely a, di a different style, a different flavor in that top side mixing in with the team. But I think of course, we all know how things played out with Adam, that different flavor, that different attitude probably is exactly what they are after to add into this team mix. I think that this is a BDS team that can, again, climb out, do some things. I think Ice is someone that, again, we had questions heading into last year. 
more than proved him and deserving of his spot staying within this lineup and getting that reinforcement of a new support in the bottom lane. Yeah, it's, I mean, maybe fourth place is, again, that's the spot they're trying to beat if your team uh, BDS coming in, but this is a much better spot for 113 to land than when he was back yes. with Astralis a couple years ago. <laughs> There's a lot less pressure on him individually. The most pressure in the LEC probably goes to the number three team and that is Fnatic the new bot lane of upset and Mickey coming in does Mickey fix all the communication macro issues that Fnatic has had but there's no question this top side core we need results this team has been too good been too near the top but not actually gotten any trophies I think this is uh, the weird mixture of actually having to ask the question is it the newcomers? Is it the new bottom lane duo upset and Mickey that have more pressure stepping into this established situation, needing to be the reinforcements or the, you know, the miraculous swip swap change that does all of a sudden fix the problems? Or is the pressure more so on the other three that are remaining with Fnatic to say, look here, we're bringing in two new pieces to try and figure stuff out, but it's time for you guys to get it done. It is time for you to show all these other problems that we have talked about and had and see, you do this, this and that, you got to solve it. You got to put up the results. You got to put up these numbers. And I think it's probably a bit of both, but it's more so like 70, 30 for me on the established three that are there, Oscar and Razork and Humanoid that are returning that need to prove that they can get it done and win a championship. I think with so many young players coming in this year, Fnatic can't just coast through and be okay like they were last year and still be a top two, top three team. They got to perform to hold on to that upper echelon status that we're so accustomed to seeing out of them in the LEC. The squad with the least changes in all of Europe. Just one single player. It's not Mad Lions, Koi. Apparently, we're rebranded back just to Koi for 2025. But this is, of course... The Spanish superstars plus Jojo Pion and no question, Supa and Alvaro stepped up internationally to close things out last year. Mirwin at times was the most exciting top laner in the entire league and you upgraded what was clearly your weakest position. Should be feeling good about Koi assuming Jojo shows up to practice. Uh, yeah, well, okay, so that's my question. How are you rolling through this as Koi? Are you presenting it as... Okay, here's your opportunity. You know, we're, you know, eight o'clock, seven o'clock. This is our schedule. Be here. El Yoya's going to pick you up. All, all these things to make sure that he's there on time and producing and practicing. Or maybe you're going the opposite route. Maybe you're going, yep, these are your crocs for when you're playing games. And these are your crocs for when you're not playing games. It's chill vibes, bro. Show up whenever you want, dude. It's fine. I don't know how they're going to play it. I think it's probably going to be more so about you better show up at these times. I don't think El Yoya is the super chill vibes guy. Right, I was going to say, that's not where I'm picking up the surfer dude vibes. No matter how chill, Jojo Pian will be coming from California over to the LEC as this import for uh, this Koi team. Yes, now Koi. Thrill about this one. I think there's a lot of mixed feelings regarding having him not in the LCS or the LTA now at this point, excuse me, but having him here in the lec and the opportunity that is provided in front of him and what he is capable of i am thrilled for this one and i think we are really all in store for a real treat and a real show getting to see him with this koi team this is very much a crossroads in jojo's young career uh if he shows up to that prodigy era and is going toe to toe with caps and the best mid laners in europe then his stock immediately accelerates all the way back to what we are expecting but if there's more rumors of him not taking things super seriously and maybe he's just a middle of the pack lec mid laner all of a sudden this prodigy hyped up prospect status is definitely in question for him and i think at the end of the day and this comes back to looking through esports and traditional sports when you have a player that doesn't maybe you know uh, live breathe and die practice for their sport you still can accept being you know interested in all these other things lackadaisical all these whatever as long as the results are there the performance that's always the number one metric that needs to be required so i think at the end of the day frankly a lot of people actually really won't care whether jojo pian is showing up to practices whether you know he's wearing crocs on stage whatever who the hell cares 
it's going to be about does he put up the performances? And if the performances are there, then they're not worried about those questions. If the performances isn't there, that's where you start to look at all these other factors and say, these are why the performance isn't there. What is wrong with you not getting it done? The guy he can try and take the throne from is... How many of these lists have we done? How many times is G2 number one? The answer is probably at least 95% of the time. Not without some changes, but they got the crown jewel of prospects right below Kalis getting promoted was Skewmond. Uh, he was... Team BDS wanted to just promote him from within, but they, he said, I, I think G2 might be coming. So I'm a hold off on that, and then I'm really excited to see Labrov on the squad. It's like that Team Vitality superstar roster that he was in, but he's in a much better place in his career. So G2 still clearly number one. G2 at number one. There's no real question about that. I think in the LEC, especially with the majority of this roster returning and being the established order that is the ones that have been the dominant champions of the European region. The changes, right? Skumon stepping into the jungle, Yike moving on out. I think this is one of those ones where, again, you know, it was kind of a there's a mixed feeling in the sense of uh, you wanted Yike to continue to develop and grow and what he could offer at G2 but realizing yes individually there's other opportunities and other growth that can happen somewhere else in the LEC and this is still also an opportunity for G2 to maybe mold maybe get something a little bit different a little bit more tailored what they wanted in the jungle position than what Yike was ending up being for the team and where he was developing into and as well Lebrov in that bottom lane that's the big one for me because a lot of people are instantly going to be looking at the head-to-head -head comparison with Mickey and I think that's not what you're going to need to do in order to find the true angle not necessarily the fit the fair angle but the true angle of what is going to be for this bottom lane because you better believe Lebrov is a serious deal support and someone that has been able to deliver more than expected when everybody is doubting him in these situations so I'm looking at him to prove the haters wrong on G2. Another year, another wave of challengers hoping down to hoping to take down uh, that G2 dynasty. But really excited for all the young talent to come through and get promoted to the LEC this year. It's very much up in the air. Who's going to make up that top four or top three going to that world championship? But that is it today for League Online. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.